the NBA season is a grind. There's no question about it. And tonight may be another game in the endless stretch of games, but that don't make it any less important. Time to put on my game face and do what I do. Win games. I said it. His game face is pretty funny. Now let's play. Let's see if we're going to lose by 30 plus points. But of course, that was against the Clippers. So you don't know. Are we at home? Wide open roadways of downtown Phoenix shining as dust falls. Thank you Last for answering for Phoenix, They won question. that game against the Lakers in Los Angeles. And I don't think I was the only one surprised, not just by their win, but guys by what an emphatic win it was. They just looked stable pretty much from the get-go, guys. I mean, sometimes you'll see some inconsistencies come up in a road game that you don't see at home, but not the case in that one. Tremendous balance on display, Greg. I mean, when you look at who was carrying the scoring load, making assists, playing unselfishly, I mean, they had it all working, and that led to the nice road. Okay, got it. And first quarter, we're about three and a half minutes here in. I'm here when I'm the point guard right Clark, now. Clark, looking around the league, there's no team that teams want to play less than the Memphis Grizzlies. They just oh, wear you down. Well, they play a physical brand of basketball. They play hard. Everybody's on the same page. And Man. even if you beat the Grizzlies, they take a lot out of you in terms of how they try to wear I you down. I was supposed to be guarding Mike Conley. Here's Conley. He's coming off a 16-point game against the Clippers. And don't forget really? his unbelievable steal really? in that game. I mean, almost Wide to open. the point they didn't want to bring the ball up the floor. And a no, chance no, to no. catch I up on some numbers here. The hustle stats for the Suns. Boy, they've really amped up the pressure at the defensive end, guys, and have piled up the steals see. in the early going. And also, yes, how about how well they defended the rim? Not just blocking shots, but also altering them wow. here in this first half. Pass to right. Takes it from 10, and that one's good. I'm sure they're satisfied with that possession, guys. Very nice shot Already that time. It's Phoenix over. leading by nine. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Well, Dave Yeager gave me a few minutes to catch up with him. We talked about the keys in preparing for this game, and he said, well, defense is always our first priority. And while we don't want our shot blockers risking foul trouble, having that backstop does enable our perimeter guys nice. the freedom Freaking to play up Biden. and aggressive. So, Kevin, pressure D and shot blocking, something to look out for. Great stuff, Doris. Thanks. That's a mantra we're going to hear, oh, I, I think, a lot from coaches. Yeah. Defense first. You know, we always do. But but it really rings true with this nice group. Shot. When they get all five guys keyed in at the defensive end, I think I they make things go. very difficult for the opponent. Yeah, and I think every single possession is going to be a battle in this one. That's what I'm expecting anyway. The Suns really? shooting their fourth and fifth shots at the foul line in the 50, game. Henry Sims has checked in for Brandon Knight. Memphis also making some changes. Randolph comes in for Mark Three Gasol. Nine. I'm and at a C minus just Conley. for missing those. In a league that's becoming more and more pick and roll a oriented. A turnover is not that is much. More of a throwback, if you will. I mean, he likes to back his man down and battle for those offensive rebounds. And so here's Phoenix following the score by Memphis. Turn and Clay Stout whistle on what looks to be an illegal screen. Well, a somewhat ragged start to the game. A and they still are able to hold the lead despite the turnovers. That's four already. And that's something that they're going to have to emphasize here moving forward. Here's Udrich. He averages a bit over six points a game. Comes out of the gate empty. He's over one. I got that. Oh, tight defense being played right there. Got right up on him and forced the miss. Textbook work. Close enough to bother the shot. Good challenge, but disciplined yep, enough to I'm avoid gonna be too stuck much at a contact. Now. now here's Booker following the miss by fault. Freak. And out of bounds is Memphis gains possession. That is just a careless turnover. You've got to be smarter in those exchanges. Lee dishes to Udrich. 
I didn't get to read about this guy. He feeds it to Randolph. And that's good off the glass that time. Peters. Wow, that was Can't get it to go. We welcome you back to Noche Latina. Becoming an annual tradition is always here on... Okay. For Eric Bledsoe. Barnes, he's checked in for Memphis. He comes in for Allen. So on the four for Memphis. Ludwig out here with Lee. And it's Brandon Wright. And it's Green. And it's Barnes. And at the three slot. Some hang time on that rim puts a little whipped cream on that angel food cake there. <laughs> it's, it's a tight ball game. And those displays of strength, Clark. Come can on. get one team rolling. Agreed. And also the other on its heels. Let's see how job. this one turns out. No good from Lee. You know, Dave yes. Yeager, the coach go, for the go, Grizzlies, go, go, has go, really go, become go. a big name coach quite quickly. Oh, man, you know, not a foul. He's Memphis coaching ladder and has had a ton of success this is early on in his down career. To the and the success we've been mentioning with coach Dave Yeager. It's 69. He was the second I can make fastest active 50, coach to get to 100 wins. And Kevin made his way in terms of coaching. Finally. Started in the D League and other minor leagues before becoming an assistant with the Grizzlies. And really was the architect, if you will, of the defense that his team is so well known for. He's done a lot for this franchise and, and looks to be on track to become their winningest coach ever. To the left wing. Just five to shoot. Here's Udrich, and it's in after a nice bounce Aww. off the right side. Udrich has got the game tied up here for the Grizzlies. Here's Peters. It's rebounded by Memphis. Last game matched up with the Clippers. A tough loss there. Yeah, not a fan of moral victories, but that game, in a lot of ways, was a confidence booster for them because they really didn't have it that night and yet still had a chance. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I think okay, they're one of the few score. teams that can play that poorly and still almost come away with a win. Yes, and not yes. with the assist that time. Seven points for Freak. There's 31 seconds left now here in the second. Out to Lee. But three. That perfect That's good. work. He's finding all kinds of ways to get it done. What a quarter he's had. Suns trail by three. And this should be the last possession of the quarter. Exactly. I'm right with uh -huh. you there, Greg. I mean, no need to give the ball back before the end of the quarter. Make sure you get the last shot here. And Udrich kicks to Green. With the fadeaway. That misses would have counted had it gone in. And a pretty tight. All right, guys, I want to go over some things before we get back out there. They look absolutely helpless out there to contain our low post offense. And the more that continues in the second half, the more beat up and dejected they're going to be. But we did get a nice lift off the bench in that half. I might want to stay with some of those hot hands so everybody be ready. And let me touch on tempo for a second. We're not out to use the whole shot clock, but I would like to see us get set up offensively. Now, the start of the third quarter, welcoming you back in a closely contested first half so far. Finally. Talk about some great So, for the Suns, Henry Sims has checked in for Morris. John Luer comes it's in for P.J. Tucker. And Freak subbed in for Brandon Knight. Memphis also making some changes. Right, he's checked in for I'm Randall. Not question that. Barnes comes in for Green. And it's Udrick in for Tony Allen. Peters, he's in a point guard. Aww. Chandler out there with Henry Sims. Then it's John Luer, and it's Bledsoe in at the two spot. That's who's out there for Phoenix. Come on. Now here's Conley. He's covered by Peters. Nobody near Barnes. 
No good on the triple. Yes. A good board there, yes. Kevin, but overall they're getting slightly out rebounded. And that's a good place to start if you're going to try to I find your way back to into up. this game. Get to work on the glass. Gasol a screen. Conley kicks to Barnes. Oh, it's that. And it's Conley penetrating. And a missed layup. It just hasn't been a very been good day for him, guys. They need that. him to start burying some of those. Clark, thinking back to when Mike Conley was drafted fourth back in the 2007 draft, fourth overall. He, he wasn't an instant star, but he has gotten better every season. Yeah, it took him a little while. I mean, he was only a freshman coming out of college back in 2007. And that was a nice start. He had to fight for minutes, grind away. The Grizzlies kept trying to get his replacement to appear, but he stayed the course, and now he's their franchise he's point guard. Stay down. Stay down. And guys, one thing you sometimes gets lost. I mean, Mike Conley is yes, a proven yes. winner. Remember, you go back in high school. Really? Here's Freak. Not sure there's anything they can do to salvage this one. Not anymore. I mean, any chance they had got away from them, slipped right out of their hand. So on the four for Memphis. Conley and Allen in the backcourt. Green is a three with she. I can't believe you just sort of jump for So it's it. Memphis. Gentlemen, I'm here with Mark Gasol. And Mark, how would you break down there? this game in terms of the team's performance and ability to come away with this win? The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Thank you, Kevin. And now let's here. move on to the presentation of our Jordan player of the game, Zach Randolph. Boom, boom, boom. That's right, Ernie, instruments. This guy was instrumental in the night in making sure they avoided a second straight loss. They needed somebody to step up tonight, and he was their guy. He was a monster on the inside for them. His strength and his size came into play so much tonight. And to go along with his physicality, he had a sweet touch around the basket. And that'll do it for this edition of the NBA on 2K Sports. Hope you enjoyed the show. From myself, Kenny Smith, Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin Harlan, and the entire 2K Sports crew. Have a wonderful evening. Yeah, send him in. Cece. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. My pleasure. Freak. Great game last night. That's what I do, right? Indeed, have a seat. <laughs> Pagnotti. How you doing? Thought you'd be selling used cars by now. Funny, comedian. I thought you would have invested in some new clothes, being a team owner and all. I see he's still rocking that Goodwill look. Freak, what are you hanging around with this guy for? You know he's bad company, right? Got no choice. He helps me pay the bills. <laughs> Plus, our mother loves him. Thank you all for coming by on such short notice. You're welcome. So you know why we're here, right? Not really. You want to negotiate an extension for Freak, right? Well, since you mentioned it, your client is quickly becoming a liability for this organization. We've already put a plan in place that's finish, going to address Dom, all your concerns please, and issues. Let me finish. Thank you. Myself, the front office, and the coaches are not satisfied with the adjustments you've made in your life off the court. I personally warned you about the company you keep and were fed up with the late nights and showing up late to shoot arounds and the bad press and the incident at the nightclub. <sighs> I told you Vic was gonna be your downfall and I was right. Something has to change now or we're not gonna need your services any longer. If this is about that Twitter stuff, Vic was playing. Okay, it was a joke. It's not about that, it's everything. But like I told you before, Vic is my best friend. I can't just cut him off. He's practically family. Not really. What exactly are you trying to say? I'm not trying to say anything, Dom. I'm saying it. Freak and his friend Vic are a problem for me and this organization. And I called you in here to figure out how we all together can fix this problem. And right now, I'm only seeing one solution. I agree that Freak may need to make some adjustments in his personal life off the court, but that's a learning process. We both know that. But this, 
This almost sounds like a threat, and Don Pagnotti doesn't take too kindly to threats. Is this a threat? Call it what you will. We all know that Vic is a problem. The only person who doesn't seem to realize that is my brother. I'm sorry, bro, but enough is enough. I don't have a problem with what you're saying. I have a problem with how you're saying it. Now, I know we can come to some understanding without all the ultimatums or threats. Can we all come to a understanding, a compromise? No, no more compromises. I already warned Freak. I told you, don't be a hero, cut that zero. It's cut Vic loose or we trade Freak. It's that simple. Fine, we'll go sign with another team. Good luck with that, Pagnotti. Because of Vic, Freak's reputation precedes him. No, because of Freak's God-given talent, his reputation precedes him. Everybody's been talking. Dom, you know how this works. This is not about you and me and our history. This is about your client. Help him. You're talking as if I'm invisible. You talking around me, about me, but not to me. Vic has always had my back. And I've given this team everything I got. I practice hard. I play hard. Yeah, some nights I got it, some nights I don't. Some days I might even show up a little late to shoot arounds. But every time I'm on that car, I've always given my best. And I see how it is, though. I mean, us players got to be loyal to you, but you don't have to be loyal to us players. Try to give me some father and son talk. Talking about how you love your players and how you look up for them. Come on, man. You trying to cut me off like you cut off Izzy. Don't you have people loyal to you no matter what? People you can't cut off? Well, that's me and Vic. Vic and me. Y'all insist, really. They could tell me stop hanging with Vic. What makes you think they won't tell me stop talking to you? That you remember in seventh grade, some guys were trying to jump me over some girl. Vic was the one to get some friends just to walk me home. And when they came, we went at it, but I wasn't alone. When I got my scholarship, it was Vic who put the word on the streets that nobody should mess with me because I had a future. Vic was protecting me. And sir, uh, I know, I know Vic is crazy. But before all the hype and the lights, media, fans, it was just me and Vic. He's always been there. I mean, if y'all don't like that, I don't know what to say. It hurts me to say this, but I see his point. What you don't understand is that the league doesn't have your back anymore. Not like they used to. They try, but it's too much. Social media has changed everything. And this last incident with Vic, that was the final straw. It was a joke. It wasn't funny. You know it wasn't a joke. Vic was defending you, stepping in to protect your honor by attacking another teammate like that? Talking about his manhood, his wife, his kids, his family, so you can be the big dog on the court? What's on call for? And they all know your relationship with Vic? So they think it's coming from you. But that's the media blowing everything out of proportion as usual. It's not just the media. He's attacking other players, other teams. He's out of control. Vic just doesn't know how to behave. We got guys on our squad who don't want to be here because of that beef. There is no place for that kind of inappropriate behavior in this league. If you can't trust your teammates, who can you trust? What Vic is doing isn't right. He's bringing you down, and people can see it. I see how all the other players are looking at you. Oh, it's not cool. It's not cool at all. What, don't talk to him? Don't hang with him? You do what you gotta do, that's your call. But let me tell you this. You asked me if I had friends that I couldn't cut off? Yeah, I did for a while. Friends, business partners, girlfriends, wives, family that I thought I couldn't cut off. But I learned that sometimes you gotta make the hard decisions. I mean, some of these people, they were just bad for me. They were bringing me down. They weren't making me better. They were good for the time that they were there, but I grew up. Not in age and maturity, but in mind and spirit. I was ready for the next level in my life. And I'll be honest with you, I've been on the receiving end of that. I've been cut off before myself. And yeah, it hurt at the time. But looking back, they were doing the right thing for me. Just don't tell my ex-wife that, Pagnotti. So what's the next move? The next move is freaks. It always has been. Question is, is he ready and willing to do what needs to be done? This is messed up. You take a moment to think about it, but think long, think wrong. The snafu should have been cleaned up a long time ago. With or without you, we got games to win. Freak, you gotta handle your business. Okay, we've all said our piece.
You might cut me off as your manager, but I will always be your sister. So when this is on you. I might not like it, but I will respect any decision you make. Yvette, please. CC, Yvette. Where's Dom? I had him call you. Why? I'ma cut right to the chase. My brother is deeply in love with you, and I'm ready to put our differences aside if you are. Really? On a strain. I'm, I'm with it. Team Freak. Team Freak. All right, so if you're going to be down with the team, I got to show you the dap. Oh, the dap? Yeah. OK. <laughs> OK, look like this. Oh. One, two, three, three shoot, shoot, swish. Swish. Yeah. Again. Like, mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, swish. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs>